Okay, so this is the review for The Flash, Episode 1, The Pilot, which was directed by David Nutter, and the story was written by Greg Delancey, Andrew Kreisberg, and Jeff Johns. I just gotta say that I was very adamant when I heard this series was being announced, because the character of Barry Allen was first introduced into Arrow, which is this show is a spinoff of in the same universe, and we were introduced to that character played by Grant Gustin. I wasn't so impressed with Grant Gustin on his first outing as the character, but the more I watched that episode over and over again, the more I leaned toward him, and this pilot really sold me on his acting and him portraying the character of Barry Allen. That was one of the main reasons I was pumped for this. Another reason was that this was originally going to be a backdoor pilot on Arrow, I believe it was going to be the 21st episode, I think it was the Man Under the Hood, and that was scrapped, and this show went straight to pilot order, which was awesome, because you're that means we were definitely getting a show, and I had watched this pilot when it leaked over the summer, and I couldn't wait for it to air on TV, and I watched it, and I loved it, I loved every single part of this pilot, I watched it probably two three times because i was just so so just excited to see the flash on screen again since the like the 90s so jumping into the story we start off with barry allen running around the city and he uh, takes us back and narrates him from a child to what he is doing now we see back when he was a kid we meet barry's mother and father and it seemed like a very nice loving family And one night, Barry wakes up to find that a lightning storm is occurring in his house, and it is surrounding his mother, and we see a man inside the lightning storm, in which that man character seems to look like Reverse Flash. And then Barry's father tells him to run, and then Barry is just sped away and is left in the middle of the street, blocks away from his house and by the time he gets back his father's being arrested for his mother's murder and Barry has been uh, has been spending years trying to prove it so we flash forward back to the present and then we see Barry late as always as one of Barry Allen's trademarks from the comics I was happy to see that they kept a lot of the character in intact with this version of the character he was late to a crime scene which um, involved two crooks robbing a bank, and we are introduced to Joe West, which is Barry's adoptive father and father of Iris West. And Barry goes back to his crime lab, and with the evidence he got from the crime scene, runs it through and gives the evidence to Joe, and to Joe for three farming factories, which um, Clyde Martin, his brother, could be found. So, Barry and Iris afterwards go to see the particle accelerator get turned on. While attending the particle accelerator event, Barry and Iris are standing there and she gets robbed of her laptop bag. So, Barry runs after the guy. The guy seemingly gets away but is stopped by Eddie Thorne. Who is another? It was one of the main characters on the show we were introduced to for the first time, and we can see the uh, that Iris is has an instant attraction to the guy, and Barry can obviously see it, but she just seems to act like that she can easily dance around it and just act like she's not attracted to him at all. So Barry goes back to his crime lab and decides to watch the particle accelerator get turned on on TV. And the particle accelerator has a major malfunction, and the energy from the particle accelerator pops, and a, a huge energy wave is sent going directly through the cloud, and sends a lightning bolt, which ends up striking, um, striking Barry, and puts him in a coma for nine months. Barry then awakens nine months later in Star Labs, and have been placed there by Dr. Harrison Wells and his team of assistants, Caitlin Snow and Cisco Ramon. Barry awakens to find 
that he was in sleep for nine months and that the particle accelerator was a huge disaster. After visiting Iris and letting her know that he was awake, Barry starts experiencing that he is a lot faster than he was before. His metahuman powers start to kick in, and he goes back and tests his powers and ends up running as fast as he could possibly can. His flash powers just kick in just like that. And honestly, the special effects were really, really great for those scenes. Later on, Barry goes to visit Iris, and then he ends up seeing her and Eddie making out. And she goes to talk to Barry and tell him to keep it a secret, which he's obviously uncomfortable with. Then we see Clyde Martin, <clears throat> one of the um, a perp who was one of the perps that robbed the bank, who seemingly died during the particle accelerator explosion when his plane was taken down by the dark ma dark matter wave that ruptured through the sky and he almost takes out iris and barry so then barry gets iris to safety and runs after martin and when in <clears throat> excuse me sorry and as he was chasing martin somebody actually ends up dying and barry fails in his first outing as a superhero barry goes back and confronts Caitlin, R Cisco Ramon, and Dr. Wells about them knowing that there are other metahumans out there besides Barry. Barry then feels re feels responsible that he couldn't save somebody and runs off to Starling City to go talk with Oliver Queen, the Arrow from Arrow TV show, and goes and basically says that he doesn't feel that he's cut out for this. And Ollie gives a very inspirational speech it does seem kind of out of character for this version of green arrow he's like a much darker version i just felt like the speech just kind of didn't really seem that it fit but it was a nice uplifting um thing for barry to hear and he runs back and cisco and caitlin provide him with a friction proof suit in which they the three of them make a pact to find all the metahumans and round them up that were affected by the particle accelerator. Barry then runs out and finds Martin and saves Detective West and Thawne, who are both out confronting Martin, who were just not up for the task of taking him down. So Martin brings, um, starts up a giant tornado, and Barry runs around it and tries to cut his legs off by running in the opposite direction. Which is smart. It's a classic thing the Flash does in the comics all the time. And it was really cool to see like Detective West's expression because in this universe stuff like this just doesn't happen. And just to see like their perspective, like, okay, this is real, this dude's like running really fast, like stuff like this just does not exist. It was just really cool to see like his reaction to this. After disrupting the tornado, Martin goes to shoot Barry, and then the Detective West actually takes him out. West now seeing that Barry is the Flash, which is something I was really, really happy with that they got off the bat, it was that they just got out that, oh, hey, yeah, I'm the Flash. It was really cool they got that off the bat, because that's one of the things I don't like, like, in TV shows, where they have to keep, like, trying to keep secrets from each other, and the half-baked excuses... Especially from the, when you work in a police um, place like that. And it's really cool now that Barry has like a confidant besides um, Wells, Caitlin, and Ramon back at Star Labs. Really cool that he has somebody outside that place who, can, who he can confide in and he doesn't have to sit and lie to. Barry then goes afterwards to visit his father in prison telling him that he has now has a way to find who killed his mother and he promises and makes a vow that he will get his father out of prison. I do have to say these two actors, John Wesley Shipp and Grant and Gustin, have really good chemistry together. You really buy that they have a great relationship and you don't even see them as the actors. They just fall right into their characters and they pull really good emotion out that is really believable and it's really great, for especially for a show on the CW. 
as the episode ends, we go back to Star Labs as we observe Harrison Wells, and he unlocks a secret room, which is inside Star Labs, and he, which is revealed that he's not a paraplegic, which was shown that he was in a in a wheelchair and that he's supposedly sustained damage from the particle accelerator accident. And he pulls up a holographic news image from the future con um, concerning Barry's fate as the Flash, saying that he had vanished in a crisis. And there are a lot of other cool um, little Easter eggs and tidbits that you can see. The one of the cool Easter eggs was there was a Wayne and Queen Consolidated merger complete. And a lot of people speculated whether they were going to use Batman in this universe or not, and apparently br the Wayne... Bruce Wayne exists in this universe, which means Batman is going to have to exist now, and they just can't use him just yet. Because he's being used in the film, and then on Gotham, on the, um, on the Fox. And one of the other cool, um, Easter eggs was the Red Skies Vanish. Now, Red Skies has always been associated with Darkseid when he, when he invades a planet, because that's when red, the whole sky has just turned red. And it was what really cool because I I'm really curious if they're gonna do Dark Side or not. And Wells is just a very very interesting character. Like I don't I'm very unclear of his motives, especially like since we're like four episodes into the show, I'm just jumping back and reviewing the pilot. And I like to review the other three episodes that have come out and the rest of the episodes as much as I can. Overall, I think this is a very, very, very good pilot, and the series so far has been great, and I hope it continues to be really, really good. I will be back with more reviews of the episodes. The last remaining I have to review are Fast Man Alive, Things You Can't Outrun, and Going Rogue. I will get to those as soon as I can, and this is Starkiller2099, and I will see you guys later.